Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I extend a very warm welcome to all of you to the ET Government Transforming Odisha 2022 in association with the Department of Electronics and IT Government of Odisha and Odisha Computer Application Center, OCAC. The agenda for this event is conceptualized around digital innovations reshaping development goals. Odisha's Chief Minister, Naveen Patnaik, has transformed Odisha by erecting and ensuring a people-centric governance model. The conclave will provide a platform to senior government officials, technology leaders, and a galaxy of luminaries from academia to discuss the paradigm shift in governance, adoption of digital technologies in the new normal, and changing landscape and ecosystem of IT and ITES industries, as well as electronics manufacturing in the state of Orissa. Dear viewers, I request all of you to please use the hashtag ETTransformingOdisha in all your social media posts. The knowledge shared by the industry leaders and policy makers should reach a larger audience. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to acknowledge the support of the group of partners. Thank you to our co-host partner, Department of Electronics and IT Government of Odisha and Odisha Computer Application Center, OCAC. Powered by partner, TCS. Supporting education partner, Kalinga Institute of Industrial Technology, KIIT. Security partner, Fortinet. Cloud technology partner, Oracle. PSU Partners, Mahanadi Coal Fields Limited, Odisha Mining Corporation Limited. Supporting Partners, Akshara, Odisha Trust of Technical Education and Training, Odisha Knowledge Corporation Limited. Even Tech Partner, we Conflex. Once again, on behalf of the ET government team, I thank you to all of you for all your support. Now, without further ado, we'll start the symposium by the inaugural session on Digital and Future Ready Odisha. I would like to invite T. Radha Krishna, Editor, South ET Government, for the welcome address. Welcome, Mr. Radha Krishna. Over to you. Hi, our Chief Guest, Honorable Chief Minister of Odisha, Sri Naveen Patnaik, our Guest of Honor, State Minister for Electronics, Information Technology. Sports and Youth Services, Sri Tushar Kanti Behera, State Minister for Science and Technology, Sri Ashok Chandra Pandha, Special Guest, State Chief Secretary and State Chief Development Commissioner, Sri Suresh Chandra Mahapatra, Chairman of Odisha Skill Development Authority, Sri Subhato Bhakti, Program Chair of the Conclave and the Secretary of the Department of Electronics and Information Technology, Sri Manoj Kumar Mishra, Distinguished Speakers, Delegates and Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of ET government, I extend a warm welcome to all of you to the Transforming Odisha Conclave 2022 being held today. The main theme of the today's conclave is Digital Innovation Reshaping Development Goals. The Transforming Odisha Conclave is being organized by ET government in association with the Department of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of Odisha, and its technical Directorate Odisha Computer Application Center. As we all know, technology is an incredible tool. It connects people, creates jobs worldwide, and makes life easier for millions of Indians and global citizens. Video conferencing technology is one best example of the adoption of technology. Governments across the country and globe use the VC systems extensively during the first and second waves of the COVID-19 pandemic. Digital banking is another best example. Technology adoption has been evolving from time to time in India ever since its independence. In the 1990s, the administration reforms encouraged the technology to bring accountability, transparency, and productivity to the government functions. This scenario continued in the first decade of the 20th century. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the adoption of technology much faster. As I speak now, Government of India holds nearly 55 mobile applications or digital platforms, real-time dashboards for all the key ministries and their departments, and national program and digital war rooms for some ministries are also introduced. Websites of ministries and the departments in central government and the state government have undergone a makeover and they emerged with the new avatars powered by artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. In addition, ICT, science and technology, space technologies are also being 
used extensively for the benefit of the people and the nation. Several state governments are leading the digital revolution. I am happy to know that Odisha's government developmental goals are aligned with the science and technology tools. Governance is evolving powered by technology. According to a, a market report, technology business in public sector is projected to total $8.3 billion or a 63,000 crores in 2022, increasing 8.6% from the 2021, the previous year. Digitization initiatives of government organizations took a giant leap in 2020 because of the global pandemic, which forced the government to shift priorities as supply chains and revenue streams dwindled. The key objective of today's Transforming Odisha Conclave is to promote best practices and innovations and showcase success stories from the government of Odisha. The summit will bring together thought leaders from the state government and its organizations that have undertaken the best government to government, government to citizen, and government to business initiatives. Today's summit has an inaugural session focused on the theme of digital and the future of Odisha. Special addresses by the government leaders and also as many as six panel discussions and a fireside chat too. The special addresses by Sri Ashok Kumar Mina, Principal Secretary, Department of Panchayat Raj and Drinking Water and Government of Odisha on the theme of taking a giant leap in digital governance and delivering citizen services to the last mile. It is followed by another special address by Mahanandi Coalfields Limited, Chairman and Managing Director, Sri O.P. Singh on the theme of innovation in the Mahanandi Coalfields Limited in the age of digital technology. The panel discussion themes include digital transformation in Odisha, next generation technologies transformation governance, unleashing the power of emerging technologies for taking citizen-centered governance to the next level, building a self-reliant Odisha innovation in the health and education sectors, paradigm shift in governance, adoption of digital technologies in the new normal, innovation in public sector undertakings in the age of digital technology, state public sector undertakings, redefining infrastructure, economic development in Odisha. Last but not the least, rethinking cybersecurity strategy for government. The FISA chat with the Sri R. Vinil Krishna, Special Secretary to the Chief Minister and Commissioner Com Secretary, Department of Sports and Youth Services, Government of Odisha, on the theme of decoding Odisha's model for sports development. Several state government officials from Odisha are participating in the summit and are addressing the conclave today. Some of the names include Sri Asit Tripathi, Principal Advisor to Chief Minister of Odisha, Chairman Western Odisha Development Council, Sri CJ Venugopal, Action Chief Secretary and Chief Administrator, Koraput Bolangir, Kalahandi Region and Chief Resident Commissioner, New Delhi, Sri Sanjeev Chopra, Agriculture Production Commissioner, Commodity Chief Secretary, Department of Home, Sri Ashok Kumar Meena, Principal Secretary, Department of Panchayat Raj, Needing Water, Srimati Ranjana Chopra, Principal Secretary, Department of MSMEs, SESC and Minority Backward Class Welfare, Sri Hemant Sharma, Principal Secretary, Department of Industries, and Sri Vishal Kumar Dev, Principal Secretary, Department of Finance. The summit has tried to put the best content and trends before you for the benefit of industry and the nation and the state. I once again, Welcome all of you to the Transforming Odisha Council 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Radha Krishna, for kickstarting the event and sharing the brief on digital and future ready Odisha. Now we'll play two short films on Odisha's transformational journey. First film is on Musarkar, and second film on Odisha One. मो सरकार हेउची लोकंक सरकार लोक माने हेउचंती गणतंत्र रा आत्मा जेहेतु लोक मानंको पैसा रे सरकारी कर्मचारी वेतन नेउचंती तेनु समस्त सरकारी अनुष्ठान गुडीकर प्रकृत मालिक हेउचंती नागरिक 
एही विचार धारा रे आमो प्रिय मुख्यमंत्री श्रीजुक्त नवीन पटनायक आरंभ कले मो सरकार कार्यक्रम विभिन्न सरकारी दफ्तर को सेवा पई आसुथिबा जनसाधारणक प्रत्यक्ष मतामत को विक्षिप्त भाव रे संग्रह करा जाई सरकारी संस्था गुडी को अधिक दक्ष करबा सहित लोकमानन को उत्तम व्यवहार ओ उपयुक्त सेवा जोगेई देबा एही मो सरकार कार्यक्रम रो मूल लक्ष्य एबे जदि कोनोसी व्यक्ति किछि बि सरकारी अनुष्ठान को सेवा पई जानती तेबे तांकर मोबाइल नंबर टिकु प्रथमे मो सरकार पोर्टल रे पंजीकृत करा जिवो एवं 24 घंटा मध्य रे एक एसएमएस जरिया रे सूचित करा जिवो जदि एसएमएस न आसे ताहाले टोल फ्री नंबर 14545 को मिस कॉल करी पंजीकृत कराई परिबे तेबे पंजीकृत होइथिबा समस्त नंबर मध्यरु विक्षिप्त भाव रे चयन करा जाइथिबा नंबर को जोगाजोग करा जिवो मतामत पई विभागीय मुख्य ओ वरिष्ठ अधिकारी वृंद एमिति की मुख्यमंत्री मध्य फोन माध्यम रे सेवा पई जाइथिबा व्यक्तिं क थारु मतामत नै पारंती जेमिति की व्यक्ति जनक पुलिस थाना को जाइथिले सेठी तांकु ठीक समय रे उपयुक्त सेवा मिलिला कि नाही कोनोसी कर्मचारी लांच मागिले की बिना भय एवं पक्षपात रे पदक्षेप ग्रहण करा गला की एमिति की डाक्टरखाना को जाइथिले औषध विभिन्न प्रकार रो परीक्षा ओ सेवा मागणा रे जोगेई दिया गला की नाही कोनोसी कर्मचारी घरोई औषध दुकान किंबा निदान केंद्र को जिबा पई बाध्य कराइले की एई भली अनेक प्रश्न माध्यम रे चयन करा जाइथिबा लोकन को निकट रो मतामत ग्रहण करा जिबो जदि अनुकूल मतामत रुहे ताहाले उक्त अनुष्ठान को भलो र्यांक मिलिबा सह सेवा जोगाइथिबा कर्मचारी को आगुआ पदोन्नति मिलिबो जदि संख्याधिक प्रतिकूल मतामत आसे ताहाले श्रृंखलागत कार्यानुष्ठान मध्ये ग्रहण करा जिबो अक्टूबर 2 रु जटिल सेवा जोगाउथिबा राज्यर समस्त पुलिस थाना ओ 21 टी जिल्ला मुख्य चिकित्सालय एवं तीनोटी मेडिकल कॉलेज रे मो सरकार कार्यक्रम आरंभ करा जाय छि जहाँ 30 अक्टूबर सुधा राज्य रो समस्त जिल्ला मुख्य चिकित्सालय को यह संप्रसारित हेबो एवं 2020 मार्च 5 तारिख सुधा राज्य रो समस्त सरकारी ऑफिस को मो सरकार कार्यक्रम रे अंतर्भुक्त करा जिवो मान्यपर मुख्यमंत्री करो यही मो सरकार कार्यक्रम द्वारा सरकारी अनुष्ठान मानन करो कार्यधारा कर्मचारी मानन करो कार्य प्रणाली ओ लोकों को समस्या प्रति सेमानन करो वृत्ति गतो ओ नौतिक दृष्टि भंगी रे उन्नति ओना जीवा सह सासनो पद्धति आहुरी स्वच्छो ओ सुद्रुड़ा है बो। नमस्कार मुनवीन पटनायक कोची माँ अपना मालकानगिरी हॉस्पिटल जाए थे लेकी ट्रीटमेंट कैंप थी माँ अपना भंजनगर पुलिस स्टेशन जाए थे कि टंका मांगी लेकी बहुत धन्यवाद नवीन पद्धति रे शासन आहुरी स्वच्छ मो सरकार रे लोके हेले सशक्त प्रशासनिक व्यवस्था आगो को आहुरी हेबो सरल ओ स्वच्छ राज्य सरकारन को प्रतिटि विभागीय सेवा ओ नीति निर्धारण विषय रे राज्यवासिन को जानिबा पई हेले एबे ओ भिन्न भिन्न विभागीय वेबसाइट को जिबा को पडिबो नाही यहाँ समाधान निमंत्रे राज्य सरकारों को ई एवं आईटी विभाग समस्त विभागीय वेबसाइट को एकत्रित करने को राई ओडिसा वन नामरे एक वन स्टॉप पोर्टल को डेवलप कराई चंती। तबे यही पोर्टल प्रत्येक विभाग रथिबा ई गवर्नेंस एप्लिकेशन रो विकल्पन हुए। यही ओडिसा वन पोर्टल रे समस्त व्यवस्था एक सिंगल विंडो प्लेटफॉर्म रो व्यवस्था करा जाई छि एबे प्रथम पर्याय रे राज्यवासी एही ओडिसा वन पोर्टल रे जन्म प्रमाण पत्र मृत्यु प्रमाण पत्र होल्डिंग टैक्स ट्रेड लाइसेंस देय पानीय जल देय सेसु एवं ग्रिड को रे विद्युत देय ओ ओएसआरटीसी रो बस टिकट बुकिंग परि सातटी सेवा पाई परिबे एवं एथि सहित स्वयं चालित भाबे एही पोर्टल रे मोबाइल मेसेज एवं ईमेल जरिया रे वार्ता मध्य पाई परिबे परवर्ती पर्याय रे राजस्व ओ विपर्जय परिचालना एवं कृषि ओ कृषक कल्याण परि गुरुत्वपूर्ण विभाग रे लोकमानन को पई उद्दिष्ट थिबा प्रतिटि सेवा को एही ओडिसा वन पोर्टल जरिया रे लोकमानन को पाखरे पहुचाइबा पई विभाग द्वारा पदक्षेप निया जाय छि एही एप्लीकेशन जरिया रे आर्थिक नेणदन पई आईसीआईसीआई ओ एचडीएफसी बैंक सह विभाग चुक्ति करिसथि जहा को ओकाक पर्यवेक्षण करू छि यह व्यतीत राज्य रो डाटा केन्द्र को मध्य एही एप्लीकेशन जरिया रे जे भली राज्यवासी लॉगिन करी सहज रे तथ्य हासिल करि परिबे तार व्यवस्था कराई छंती विभाग 
राज्य सरकार इ एवं आईटी विभाग ओडा वन परी एक उन्नत और परर्तित इ प्लाटफर्म परिकल्पना आज राज्यवासी स्वच्छ और सुसंगठित प्रशासनिक सेवा जोगाइबार सहायक हो Dear viewers, hope you all found the videos informative. Now we'll move to the keynote address by program chair of the conclave, Mr. Manoj Kumar Mishra, Secretary, Department of Electronics and IT, Science and Technology, Government of Orissa, Chairman OCAC and OSD to the Chief Minister of Orissa. He'll share knowledge and updates on transforming governance through ICT innovation in Orissa. Over to you, sir. नमस्कार ऑनरेबल चीफ मिनिस्टर श्री नवीन पटनायक ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर फॉर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी स्पोर्ट्स एंड यूथ सर्विसेस श्री तुषार कांति बेहरा ऑनरेबल चेयरमैन ओडिशा स्किल डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटी श्री सुब्रत बागची जी चीफ सेक्रेटरी श्री सुरेश चंद्र महापात्र ऑल माय कॉलीग ऑफिसर्स डेलीगेट्स व्यूअर्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन i am very happy that uh, the my department department of uh, electronics and information technology and okay have partnered with uh, et uh, economic times and uh, et government to come up with a uh, forum like this uh, for the first time which is known as uh, transforming odisha conclave this is the first edition this is a forum where we share our ideas share the good works that we have done across uh, the state across departments and through which we intend to learn and implement a little more for the people of uh, odisha thank you et thank you et government for uh, for doing this uh, conclave i uh, as a uh, chair for uh, this forum I, i really feel proud uh, that we have been able to organize uh, in such a big way despite the fact that uh, uh, covid protocols are uh, still there in some sense and we are unable to do it in physical mode but in virtually it is the one of the best programs that we have been able to pull together the best of the minds of the state are coming together so i i would request and uh, everyone uh, listeners to indulge a little bit more spend time on uh, today and hear about uh, the stories of odisha coming through uh, various people who are involved in the process odisha story is uh, is a very interesting story uh, gone are the days when odisha was known uh, as the negative headline in the national stories today odisha the best kept secret story is a overwhelmingly positive story across the country uh, in the it sphere it is no less uh, in fact uh, today we are uh, seventh largest exporter of it we have we are almost 5000 crores uh, we are exporting per year uh, we produce about 50000 uh, btech students every year uh, one of the largest manpower provider for the entire it ecosystem of the country uh, if you know uh, bhubaneswar today has iit uh, odisha has iim uh, bhubaneswar has triple it nizer either you name universities all universities related to management and uh, uh, technology are there in odisha that makes odisha to be the biggest education hub in the eastern side of this country this has not come about just like that this has come about because the government has been extremely focused and have prioritized that this is the sector which is the growth sector for the future and uh, covid naturally has uh, accelerated the entire process of adoption of it and it adoption is something that uh, the government of odisha has uh, stood as an example uh, to all others Uh, i will uh, dwell a little bit more on how the government has adopted it and become an example uh, this happened much before uh, covid 19 in fact uh, when 2019 honorable cm took charge of office uh, for the fifth term uh, he uh, gave the mantra what is to be done in the next 5 years he wanted that uh, people should be able to get government services without having to come to government offices in fact his uh, his words were they should have the choice of not coming to government offices and that brought about the 5t mantra the the now everybody knows about 5t uh, that is the underlying uh, theory underlying practice that we do in everything that we are trying to do 
and 5T, uh, though we, we component wise, we talk about uh, teamwork, technology, transparency in right time leads to transformation. Uh, but the, uh, the main uh, source of the 5T is the business process, the engineering of government services. When uh, uh, we talked about providing government services at the doorsteps of people or at their fingertips, it is not about just making uh, computerization and automation. It is about reducing the burden of compliance for, for citizens. Uh, we knew that uh, for, a, for a small thing like a learner's license, uh, people used to have to uh, travel to the RTO offices twice, thrice to get just the learner license. Today, after going through the process, modifying the process, which is, which, which is why I keep using the word, the business process re-engineering of government services, Today, nobody has to come to the RTO office for a learner license. They can take the test online. There is a, uh, there's a good deal of questions which come randomly to them. So uh, a test of uh, knowledge uh, for learner license can be done uh, online. And that is available uh, for them at their fingertips. That is available through different means. I'll come to that a little while later. And it is not only this one service, I'm talking about 400 plus services which have gone through the process of 5T to reduce essentially the burden of compliance of people. And that reduces the hassles, that reduces the cost, and that improves the efficiency. That is all about transformation that we have tried to attain uh, through 5T. Uh, when we talk about uh, uh, 5T in the government, uh, there are things that uh, the Odisha government is known for today. We in the government end-to-end, uh, -end, that is not only the departments in the secretariat, but also uh, the directorates and the collectors are in performing, functioning their government role on one single platform, which is known as OSWAS, Odisha's state uh, workflow system that uh, we have been running since last about eight, nine years. We have expanded that now included all government uh, services, including the collectors, and now the SPs in the districts. So a file moves singularly from the grassroots right up to the honorable CM on the system itself. We don't deal with physical files. And during COVID time when offices were closed, we didn't get closed down essentially because of our robust system that we have uh, to function. And that robust system's backbone is uh, the statewide uh, network, which, which is known as the OSWAN, which has uh, currently the headquarters, which is Bhubaneswar, all 30 district headquarters, then uh, 300 plus blocks, and more than 1250 horizontal locations, hospitals, um, in some places, the, the panchayat offices, all of them are connected under, uh, in one network, the OSWAN, through which we deliver. Uh, in fact, at any point of time, we can do uh, like we are doing virtual conclave here. We can we can have 30 virtual meetings you know, parallelly running uh, in the system. So that has enabled us to perform during the uh, pandemic so well. And uh, that is the test uh, uh, that we have passed through uh, in terms of the IT enablement in the state government. Then uh, when we talked about the public services that we are offering at the doorsteps, uh, we created a single portal called Odisha One, which has all services. So if you are coming from outside, you do not know which department, which service, which uh, directorate, which website, you don't need to know all those details. All that you need to know is the Odisha One. Just, just type in Odisha One in Google, the, the first uh, um, answer that will come out is the Odisha One website, which houses almost about 440 government services across 44 government departments. Uh, this uh, is the enablement that we have done for the primarily used in the urban areas. Whereas we also found that in rural areas, the penetration of internet is uh, slightly poor. Uh, the uh, ability for people to use or consume or get government services digitally was also not as good. So therefore we uh, conceptualize something known as the Mo Sabha Kendra, which has the help desks available at each GP. As we speak, we have done almost over 5,200 Mosaba Kendras at uh, uh, GP, Gram Panchayat level and at the municipalities. 
and we plan to take it to more than 8000 in coming 6 to 8 months time so in those uh, mo seva kendras anyone can walk in and get their services by paying a very very uh, fixed and paltry sum of 20 rupees to 30 rupees per services and that has enabled the adaptation of digital in the rural areas people really and i gave an example of doing a learning license if you are not uh, very conversant with technology and technological platforms you don't need to really do it yourself you go to the mosaba kendra there which is in the gram panchayat which is it will not be more than 3 kilometers 4 kilometers away and get it done imagine compare that with the previous uh, process that we had somebody from the village will have to come to the district headquarters where the rpo office is most of the time and not only once two or three times imagine losing uh, livelihood for three days and then take a service which actually government earns about 10 rupees for that for so this is where we have been able to flatten uh, the state in terms of adopting technology and making everybody equal we'll uh, come to then the internet which i said that uh, the current penetration of internet in odisha is uh, extremely poor in fact uh, we have uh, the um, the bad distinction of having the largest number of villages unconnected through mobile phones um, in 2019 uh, it was about 10000 villages in the state uh, now it has come down to about 6000 villages in the state which do not have any mobile connectivity we have been uh, lucky that uh, honorable cm has taken up this particular agenda and he has been uh, raising this issue uh, since last 3 years uh, at various forums and now we we are very thankful to government of india that uh, uh, 3993 villages are being connected uh, and the cabinet has passed the proposal for odisha uh, so we expect by 2024 25 all villages of odisha will have mobile connectivity uh, this will be a phenomenal change on the ground uh, this will really bring the transformation to the grassroots at the last mile so this is what we are doing for the mobile uh, penetration for broadband we have uh, implemented bharatnet fully and the phase two which was the state was uh, commissioning is is now done uh, which means a broadband connectivity is available at every gram panchayat today and taking it beyond uh, taking the the call from the honorable prime minister to take internet to villages we have created a dpr and submitted to government of india for uh, their kind sanction to make bharatnet reach each and every village of uh, the state it is a 3000 crore project we expect that to be considered by government of india very very soon with uh, the broadband available at villages and mobile uh, connectivity available at villages 24 25 uh, that is what we are looking at two years hence i expect there will be no dark areas in terms of communication in this state uh, this, this will be huge because today even states like maharashtra has about 3500 villages unconnected so it is not only uh, the so called um, developed state which uh, uh, which has mobile connectivity it is all across the situation is that there are pockets which are dark uh, there are villages which are dark and action is being initiated to to uh, to to bring communication to those areas uh, we do a lot of uh, I talked a lot about the infrastructure which is required. We also do a lot of uh, work in terms of utilizing the emerging tech. Whether you talk about cloud, you talk about AI, ML, we use all of them to bring up, bring about some changes on the ground. In fact, we have we strongly believe this is the mantra of the honorable CM that technology should not be used for the sake of technology. It should be used for the sake of people, and that is where we have brought in technology to make groundbreaking uh, initiatives uh, in in this state i'll give you two three examples which i think uh, my colleague officers other secretaries would in their department will give a detailed analysis of we uh, we have done uh, using gps and uh, satellite mapping a system for uh, for the for the uh, larger city of bhubaneswar to monitor uh, encroachment of land uh, through use of uh, um, satellite mapping, which is done intermittently but continuously, and uh, comparing them with the previous uh, maps, we are able to find out 
within a day of encroachment or building of anything illegal that gets flagged up this initiative has uh, been noticed by government of india and they uh, they have asked us to present it to other states it is a full proof method by which within 24 hours officers get alerted through technology that so and so place is getting encroached uh, similarly we have done something in the rural areas where we we are a paddy uh, first state we we in fact give uh, uh, to contribute to the central pds system as the third largest state uh, in terms of paddy procurement we do know that there used to be a lot of leakages in terms of declaration of area which is under cultivation now we utilize technology we utilize mapping to find out which are the areas actually under cultivation in that particular year uh, we did it in eight uh, districts of the state and i'm very glad to share that we have been able to have a saving of about 1000 crore through this initiative this has been done by odisha remote sensing uh, service application center which is known as orsac uh, and use of technology like ai uh, and uh, uh, gis on cloud we have been able to achieve something through one particular scheme in eight district we have made a saving about 1000 crores uh, similarly uh, we have uh, if if i talk about initiatives then there are two initiatives i must talk about uh, when we are talking about transformation i keep saying that uh, the mantra that has been given is 5t which speaks not about only evolutionary changes but real revolutionary changes so in that one biggest change that we have been able to uh, do on the ground is in the healthcare sector the biju swasthya kalyan yojana was relaunched through digitally and now every family who are covered uh, almost 3.5 crore people are covered in this out of the four and a half crore people population of uh, the state uh, almost 90% families now have a biju swasthya kalyan card and that digital card gives them power to walk into any of the government hospital any any government hospital plus the uh, private hospitals which are empaneled not only in the state of odisha but also outside we have about more than 200 hospitals outside odisha which are empaneled places like cmc bellore uh, tata memorial hospital in bombay of this repute institutes have come into the fold of which is article and jodana and somebody with the card, somebody who is eligible, can walk into the hospital and avail services without any proof or any documentation. And uh, uh, the state is giving 5 lakh rupees per year to each family as a health assurance. It's not an insurance scheme. It is a guaranteed scheme. So any expenditure that happens in these hospitals are borne by the state directly. And if there are female members in the family who require additional support another 5 lakh is given per year so it is a 10 lakh rupees card it's like a debit card money in your pocket that has been given uh, to almost 3.5 crore population of the state and that has been done in the last year it has been uh, in terms of uh, it enablement for actual help of uh, of people this is one of the biggest schemes that has been carried out anywhere in the country Similarly, the second uh, a very emotive issue is uh, the uh, vernacular medium uh, schools in mostly in the villages and, and towns. We know that uh, the vernacular medium schools have lost out to the English medium schools in the uh, very urban areas. Yet, we know that I, I have been a product of a vernacular school and I'm very proud of the quality of education that we have received, especially because of the quality of teachers. The same standard of teachers are still there, but the technology availability has reduced for the for these government schools, whereas the technology availability in private schools has increased. In order to bridge that, uh, a program was started, uh, which is known as the High School Transformation Initiative. More than 3,500 schools have already got transformed, and it is not only about a digital class. It's about the entire touch and feel of the school the way uh, the desks are designed where, uh, where kids are going to sit for long hours to uh, the libraries which have access to uh, to a central depository of, uh, of knowledge bank to uh, classrooms which are digitally uh, accessible where the teachers do not have to draw through chalk and blackboard but can show it through the internet 
the whole schools have been uh, transformed to this degree that it is unrecognizable it is better than any other modern school that is available anywhere and we have done more than 3500 i think there is already plan af afloat to take up similar numbers in, in the next year so these are the two things health and education where heavy investment in terms of technology has happened and which has led to tremendous amount of satisfaction in terms of the services that our children and our families in odisha are getting uh, i talked about the initiatives i talked about how the government is has empowered itself through uh, through uh, infrastructure i must talk about the policies that the state of odisha has in in the it sphere in last 6 months we have been able to uh, we have got the cabinet approval for three policies which have come through and three brand new policies the first that came through was the esdm state esdm policy which is electronics manufacturing policy uh, we never had a electronics manufacturing policy per se as we know today the software side is almost uh, on self pilot mode in the country uh, we don't see another infosys or satyam or um, cognizant or tcs coming in in big manner but the hardware sector is where we we lag but the macro economic uh, situations have given us an opportunity to rehaul the entire uh, manufacturing sector in electronics electronics and that is in line of the atmanirbhar bharat that we are talking about and in terms of that we have now a uh, electronic park uh, just 15 kilometers from the airport in bhubaneswar 320 acres of land and it is going like hot cake today primarily thanks to the policies that we have brought in the esdm policy gives incentives which is best in the country today similarly we have come up with a data center policy just recently last month uh, we anticipate that uh, data will be the key uh, going forward in the next decade or two decades and with the uh, new change of rules which will which is likely to happen where uh, data housing and data uh, crunching of uh, Uh, in india will have to be done uh, within uh, the boundaries of the nation at that time this sector of uh, data centers is going to just go through the roof and uh, that is where the policy has come in in fact while we were preparing the policy in uh, association with uh, various stakeholders we have already got proposals for establishing uh, data centers and two such proposals have been approved one is by the government of india itself and another is a private sector Uh, we also know that it is the is going to be the largest uh, employer in terms of uh, uh, employment that we see today the sector of bpo uh, has really taken over uh, during the time of uh, the pandemic and it is getting stronger and stronger everything that uh, the back office handles let's say for the us companies in india and indian company uh, somewhere else we are uh, potentially can create millions of jobs in the field of bpo and we have come up with a state bpo policy 2022 where to set up a bpo incredible amount of incentives are being offered not only uh, if you do it in bhubaneswar but plus x if you do it somewhere else outside bhubaneswar we have been very conscious of the fact that this it revolution that has started to happen in odisha requires to be done across the state and not concentrated only on one or two cities and for that we we have done a lot of uh, collaborations uh, one of those key collaborations is with uh, the national repute organization stpi uh, in this state we have four stpi centers already and four more are under construction uh, this is the biggest number of stpi centers anywhere in the country eight we will have uh, maybe Uh, another eight month, eighteen months uh, down the line. Similarly, we have ties up. We have tied up with uh, IIT Bhubaneswar, uh, Nizer. We have tied up with all various uh, centers of excellence in education to have our programs run. Uh, I talked about the policies and uh, the programs that we are running. I must uh, uh, now come to the concluding remarks of mine to look forward to what uh, Odisha holds. Uh, for in the immediate future uh, we we continue to invest heavily on the infrastructure because it is the uh, is going to the backbone for all businesses including governance so we are going to create another state data center we have one we'll create the second one very soon uh, it it is getting uh, started 
we are expanding the oswan network to now cover uh, in in terms of uh, vcs to the gps and one of the largest stakeholder in our expansion of oswan will be the panchayat raj institutions uh, similarly we we are in uh, advanced uh, discussion for a submarine cable landing station in odisha that comes through with our data center policy i think uh, only the sky is the limit for odisha to uh, to be the first state to 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 have come up with something so concrete and so uh, attractive for establishment of uh, data centers with the bandwidth that they require uh, the last thing that i wanted to talk about was uh, in an uh, initiative that we are now trying to do is called uh, social protection delivery platform spdp in which we are trying to uh, bring all the beneficiary of the state on one platform and uh, what is known as uh, uh, minimum government maximum governance is uh, the principle in which we don't expect people to apply for their rightful requirements to the government but government should be able to push the uh, the rightful uh, schemes and uh, the, the the demands of the people directly without forcing them to go through the the bureaucratic route of uh, giving application uh, identifying themselves so that is a program that we are doing with the world bank uh, it has started and we expect in eight months time will our uh, spdp platform will be ready that not only will bring in efficiency in terms of scaling up programs implementing programs uh, in quick time but also it will ensure huge amount of transparency and uh, not allowed duplication in terms of uh, the service delivery so this will save uh, if millions it will be able to add the rightful beneficiaries to each of the programs so that is a very um, big uh, program that we have undertaken ourselves and we expect uh, by end of uh, this year 2022 we will have uh, the setup which probably will become an example for all other states to follow uh, from from odisha um i think with this i come to the uh, concluding remarks i uh, would like to thank uh, et and et government for uh, for making this happen uh, this uh, uh, forum is is an outstanding forum and i'll be watching each and every speaker uh, and try to learn and i hope that uh, our listeners uh, do uh, take something back home uh, from this forum Uh, i congratulate all of you to to have been successfully pulled together such a big uh, virtual platform and i hope that uh, this is the first edition we will do it almost every year going forward thank you everyone thank you so much and do keep watching uh, the uh, transforming of the second floor. namaskar Thank you Mr Mishra for giving us the updates on the work done by Odisha government now i'll invite our special guest Mr Suresh Chandra Mahapatra chief secretary of Odisha welcome Mr Mahapatra pleasure to have you here i'd like to thank uh, economic times uh, for this uh, conclave on uh, transformation of odisha 2022 Uh, i am extremely happy to be uh, part of this uh, conclave as all of you know uh, uh, during the covid uh, 19 pandemic uh, there was a wave of uh, digital transformation uh, all over the country and uh, this uh, impacted not only businesses uh, the pandemic also impacted government departments and uh, public institutions Uh, as a result of which uh, now large number of uh, government departments public institutions they are all embracing digital technologies at a pace uh, which is unimaginable and the objective uh, of this is to create uh, e governance structures that provide uh, hassle free contactless and uh, frictionless services to the citizens uh, of our country and odisha has uh, not lagged behind in this uh, we are uh, in the forefront of this and more and more devices are getting connected uh, to internet uh, uh, it becomes extremely important to sustain this space of digital inclusion through 
world class uh, digital infrastructures like uh, better optical fiber connectivity and uh, 5g network so enhanced uh, digital integration in areas such as health uh, education agriculture and logistics is also required so odisha is uh, in the forefront of this wave of uh, digital uh, transformation in accordance with the 5t governance model which has been en envisioned by our uh, honorable chief minister of odisha this seamless adoption was uh, most recently seen in the proactive response uh, uh, of the state in handling the covid 19 pandemic early on the state uh, launched uh, an uh, unified uh, ict covid portal to capture information on all uh, covid related uh, initiatives across the state the state government also created an integrated odisha state uh, dashboard to track the daily progress of infection and testing across various uh, districts of the state this enabled us, uh, we got a, a detailed demographic and geographic uh, breakup of infections uh, 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 in different parts of the state, as well as uh, geographical mapping of uh, bed availability in different uh, COVID hospitals and COVID care facilities. So Odisha has made great uh, strides in uh, various uh, digital uh, avenues, and it continues to progress uh, in this uh, uh, venture. Um, we have uh, extensive uh, IT infrastructure, which uh, Odisha has developed uh, in the last uh, few years. We have critical IT infrastructures in uh, recent times, and more uh, is also coming up. For example, we have a cyber security operation center, which has been set up uh, uh, to prevent uh, cyber attacks and provide real-time uh, monitoring. We have a new uh, uh, Tire 3 data center, uh, which is uh, go going to come up uh, at Okak uh, Towers, besides the existing one. Uh, this will ensure the better availability of uh, access to servers, uh, uh, databases, and a range of application services over uh, internet. The revamping of Odisha state uh, wide area network, which is Ashwan, is enabling uh, upgradation of IT infrastructure at uh, state headquarters, district headquarters, and also block headquarters, thereby ensuring better uh, e-governance in our state. In governance also, we have adopted uh, 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 digital technologies to a great extent. I'll give some uh, examples. We have a social protection delivery system uh, in which uh, we are facilitating, uh, we have a single source of trust uh, registry based on socioeconomic and demographic uh, attributes for all the bona fide residents of uh, Odisha who are currently availing benefits or are eligible to avail different benefits from the state. The state level consolidation of schemes is ensuring improved targeting identification and disbursement of benefits to the people of our state. More and more schemes are being integrated uh, under this uh, now. Uh, we have also, as all of you know, uh, we have a government scheme uh, called Kalia, which uh, provide uh, direct income support uh, to millions of farmers by relying on unified and standardized uh, database. Uh, which has uh, received uh, appreciation from all over the country for its uh, successful implementation. Similarly, uh, under Odisha One, the government is providing an online single platform for availing all citizen-centric services. In fact, uh, till date, uh, more than 90 services have already been integrated and many more are in the process of being integrated. Similarly, we have state level uh, dashboards, uh, many of them, uh, which has been developed uh, uh, leveraging the power of uh, big data, advanced analytics and visualization to drive key administrative decisions. The dashboard for COVID-19, for Kalia, UDICE, NFSA, SFSA, BSKY, Mo Sarkar, et cetera, have gone live while those 
for others are in progress. To further strengthen governance, we have a Mo Sarkar uh, scheme, which has been launched uh, under the, uh, which has been launched under which uh, uh, more than 2.3 crore citizens have been contacted for feedback collection on more than 230 services which are being delivered by the state to the citizens. Similarly, under social development, we have adopted uh, digital adoption and enhancement of uh, telecom connectivity is also enabling uh, social development uh, in our state. More than 3,100 smart classrooms have been established uh, in different uh, uh, high schools uh, in the state. And more than 3.5 crore uh, people from 96 lakh uh, families in the state are likely to benefit from the smart health card, which, which has been distributed under the Biju Shastha Kalyan Jojana BSKY in our state. Our state is also uh, getting ready for the future. So under future readiness, Odisha is also taking steps to stay in uh, sync with uh, the rapid changes that are taking place in the digital place. For example, uh, establishment of a neutral submarine cable landing station is under consideration in Puri. So this will lead to uh, improvements and growth in data connectivity in the entire state. A center of excellence on emerging technologies like industry 4.0, AI, ML, analytics, and cybersecurity has been set up in Bhubaneswar. A virtual and augmented reality center for excellence has also been established at uh, IIT Bhubaneswar. Odisha is also coming up with uh, dedicated and uh, competitive policies in electronics, BPO, data center, and IT to become a leader in these areas. A range of incentives, including those for R&D, are being offered in these policies to ensure Odisha's future readiness in the technological and digital domain. So significant investment promotion efforts are also being made to make Odisha a leading investment destination. Making Odisha conclave is also being planned to take up this year. So with all these uh, interventions, uh, we are uh, a front runner now in the country uh, as far as uh, uh, use of uh, uh, IT is concerned. And uh, we have been successful to a great extent in providing all the basic services to the citizens of our state using uh, these platforms. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mahapatra, for sharing the knowledge and the roadmap for digital and future ready Odisha. Adding more insights and knowledge to this, I would like to invite our next special guest, Mr. Subrotro Bakshi, Chairman, Odisha Skill Development Authority, OSDA, to share his views on transforming Odisha into a leading skill state and how OSDA is creating a holistic skill development ecosystem in the state. Welcome, Mr. Bakshi. The skill story of Odisha begins in the year 2016. This is when Odisha's Skill Development Authority was formed at the behest of the Honorable Chief Minister Shinabin Patnaik. His charter for the newly constituted authority was to build an aspirational brand called Skilled in Odisha. He said, a day must come when future employers would ask their potential employees, are you skilled or are you skilled in Odisha? This overarching aspiration meant three things. In the short term, high quality employers should make a beeline to lock in talent in Odisha's skill training institutions. In the medium term, global employers must come to Odisha in search of extraordinary talent. And finally, in the long term, Odisha must be known as a sandbox for innovation in the world of skill development. 
great ideas worthy of being replicated elsewhere must be tried in Odisha first. Back in 2016, towards fulfilling our goals, we created a threefold strategy. We call it fix, scale and accelerate. What it meant was that first we fix the ITI system. Second, to scale up short-term skill programs for school dropouts. And finally, we accelerate the setting up of the iconic World Skill Center. Let us first talk about fixing the ITI. In India, ITIs and IITs were set up around the same time. Unfortunately, in successive decades, the ITI institution receded in stature, even as the IITs lunged forward. ITIs became synonymous with failed aspirations and blocked dreams. If a high school student had all the doors slammed close, that child came to an ITI. The ITI was seen by many people as a failed institution. Our job was to make it aspirational. For starters, we changed the report card for the principal of every ITI. For this, we used the 10642 formula. Each ITI had to name 10 students of whom it was truly proud. Every teacher needed to know the personal story of each of the students to present them as role models to be emulated by skilled trainees. For example, they needed to know what family circumstances these 10 students come from. What was their transformation at the ITI? How did they overcome odds? And where were they placed after finishing their training? Of the 10 names, six had to be of those who have made a mark outside the state. And four had to be women, and two had to be stories of entrepreneurship. The 10642 formula caught everyone's fancy because everyone loves a delightful story. Today, all the ITIs can highlight their role models who inspire others to follow their examples. The first such role model was Muni Tiga, an Adibasi girl who lost her father early in her life. She came to an ITI. She trained for two years, and after her training, today she has become a loco engine pilot with the Indian Railways, where she hauls trains between Bhuvaneshwar and Palasa every day. Nunaram Hansda, another tribal, came to ITI Raurkela, where he always ran short of his mess dues by 30 rupees a month. His teachers pulled together the deficit and let him study. Today, Nunaram Hansda runs the insulin manufacturing line at Biocom. Just the same way, Somendra Das, trained at ITI Puri, became a trainee at Tata Motors. Quit his job, started an auto body repair garage, where today he employs 80 people and clocks revenues of rupees 8 crores. The next thing for us was to make the ITI students self-confident. Over the years, they looked like a ragtag bunch. The state roped in National Institute of Fashion Design to suggest a new set of uniforms for them. Unlike the past, today ITI students play contact sports, compete at the state level, ITI fests take place to celebrate the debating, acting and other artistic talents. They look forward to going to class today because there are other cool things to do as well. Among the many other interventions at the ITI, a significant one was the concept of a change leader to work with young students for enhancing their life skills. For this, we have partnered with Tata Strive to send bright skilled trainers to every ITI on a two-year fellowship to augment technical training with life skills. Today, 93 change leaders and project managers are part of a process that impacts 27,000 students every year who learn about ideas like learning to lead, teamwork, problem solving, sustainability, design thinking. In 2016, government ITIs had less than 6% girls. In many ITI today, it has crossed 20% and the eventual goal is to cross 33%. Today, Odisha's ITI boasts of skill museums, open air art installations that display their technical and design prowess. They take pride in the social outreach in terms of natural disasters, from fixing household gadgets in the flood-hit Kerala, to helping restore power after Cyclone Fani, 
that battered Odisha in 2019. The next thing was to create a new sense of direction and ambition among the teachers themselves. For the first time in India, we sent 215 ITI teachers and administrators to ITE Singapore, considered one of the best skilled institutions in the entire world. 90% of these teachers did not ever have a passport in their lives, signaling their own personal lack of outlook and ambition. These teachers, upon their return from Singapore, crafted the mission, vision and values for what we call the new ITI. Beyond the ITI and polytechnics, the state implements many short-term employment-linked skill training for those who have dropped out of school after their fifth, eighth or tenth class and would not go back to formal education either because they cannot cope or they have family compulsions. These youth train to become retail sales assistants, drivers, janitors, healthcare assistants, domestic electricians, industrial sewing machine operators and so on. The flagship program for such training is the Deen Dial Upadhyay Gramin Koshalya Yojana of Government of India that provides 75-day residential training in many domains. Odisha has been adjudged by the Government of India as the best performing state for DDU GKY implementation for three years successively in a row. The famed Tirupur textile built of Tamil Nadu critically depends on skilled Odia workers. These are from DDU GKY, whose deft fingers make international levels from Diesel, Guess, H&M, Mark and Spencer to Tommy Hilfiger. Among the thousands of beneficiaries of our short-term skill program is Sumati Naik, a 10th class pass from Bhadrak who could not speak any language other than Odia. Today, Sumati is a department manager at Westside Coimbatore, or consider the story of Damanti Swain, a girl from Kendrapada, who was selected by Tata Advanced Systems, Hyderabad, where she builds aircraft body for Boeing and Pilatus. To make Odisha's talent more visible, this state has been engaging at the CEO level to create a special connect with high quality employers. The efforts have paid off. Now let's talk about the iconic World Skill Center. The World Skill Center has been set up in Bhubaneswar at an outlay of nearly 193 million US dollars. It has come up in Bhubaneswar, housed in an 18-story state-of-the-art building, spanning half a million square feet. It will roll out one-year courses as a finishing school designed with the help of IT Singapore in areas like precision engineering, vertical transportation, air conditioning, refrigeration, as well as certain creative economy courses like beauty and healthcare. Additionally, through several other programs, the World Skills Center will directly and indirectly impact 1.5 lakh youth by 2024. The World Skills Center will be run with expert guidance of an expatriate leadership team of five from IT who would eventually transfer the ability to local leadership team. The World Skills Center is part of a larger skill ecosystem in the state that is being further strengthened. A key part of the overall fix scale and accelerate strategy is using the spirit of competition among youth for making skills aspirational. Towards this, in 2017, the state decided to participate in the India Skills Competition 2018, which was a precursor to World Skill Competition at Kazan in Russia. In preparation for Kazan, Odisha set up Mission 1, 2, 3. It meant Odisha would strive to get India one gold, two silvers and three bronzes. Towards this, Skills 2018 was conducted in Bhuvaneshwar for the very first time with 5,000 youth competing in trades from beauty to hospitality, nursing, welding, painting, carpentry, bricklaying, plumbing and many others. At the national level, Odisha surprised everyone with the second largest medal tally in the country slightly behind Maharashtra. More importantly, three participants from Odisha represented India at World Skills 2019 in Russia and one of them, Aswat Narayan, brought India her very first gold medal after the World Skills competition in Kazan. The next one will be held in Shanghai in China in October 2022. Towards this, India Skills Competition 2021 was recently held in Delhi by the government of India. 
This heralded Odisha's moment of crowning glory. At the India Skills 2021, Odisha has been ranked first among all Indian states with the highest medal tally in all three categories of gold, silver and bronze. A large contingent is now getting ready under what we call Mission 234. The goal this time is to get India two golds, three silvers and four bronzes at the World Skill Competition Shanghai. Based on the original charter to make Odisha a sandbox for innovation, many breakthrough ideas have been created out of Odisha and one such is the Nano Unicorn program. As we all know, a unicorn is an internet startup with a valuation of more than a billion US dollars. India has a clutch of more than 60 such entities from Ola to Oyo to Paytm. But India's true progress would depend on how many nano unicorns we can create. These are tiny enterprises set up by skilled yacht who may generate just one or two jobs at a village or a small town somewhere remote in India. To build a prototype for this, Odisha launched the Nano Unicorn program. To find a potential Nano Unicorn with talent scouted at the ITI level for their entrepreneurial aptitude, we listen to the dreams. And if we like the story, we send them to a two week mini MBA program where the person can further hone the business idea. At the end of the program, we bring in rupees 1 lakh from philanthropic funds and get the nano unicorn off the ground. A pilot has been rolled out so far with 433 nano unicorns and this will be stepped up to 3000 in the coming couple of years. The large goal is to harvest the story of entrepreneurship which we will share with young people to encourage them to look at skills as a means to become entrepreneurs beyond the journey of the last six years. Now we are beginning to dream bigger. Odisha's skill efforts are in the middle of a reject. We are soon going to start work on Skill Vision 2030. The idea is to create a blueprint for the future. We have chosen 2030 as the milestone because it coincides with the sunset of Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations for the year 2030. What would be unusual is the process of crafting the vision, the creation of subsequent policy, articulation of the strategy for implementation, and the determination of funding as well as organizational structure and the resultant change management process. The exercise would start with an analysis of global trends that would have discontinuous impact on the future of work, employment, and entrepreneurship. Vis-a-vis -vis these trends, the study would look at the as-is condition of skill preparedness of the state and then look at the could-be and the should-be scenarios. We need to plan for a differentiated position for the state to make it a global benchmark for skill development and human transformation in the decade ahead. The visioning process would entail drawing from the insights of a multidisciplinary team of design thinkers, economists, sociologists, market analysts, technology and development sector specialists and domain experts who have the thought leadership and the experience in large-scale transformation and change management. We know this is a journey that will never end. Under the leadership of the Honorable Chief Minister Sri Nabeen Patnaik, all of us are driven by a sense of purpose. We are here to take the story of skilled in Odisha to the next level that recognizes every individual's right to skill just as we talk about right to education. We are driven by the vision of the Honorable Chief Minister Shri Naveen Patnaik that skills must be seen not just as a means for employment, but as a tool for human transformation. Skilled in Odisha. Thank you, Mr. Bakhti, for sharing valuable information with our viewers. Indeed, all sessions are loaded with valuable insights and knowledge. Now, ladies and gentlemen, next I would like to invite our guest of honor, Mr. Tushar Kanti Bahera, Minister for Electronics and Information Technology, Sports and Youth Services, Government of Orissa. Welcome, Mr. Bahera. Greetings of the day to one and all. Honorable Chief Minister, Sri Navin Patnaikji, 
Honorable Minister Sri Ashok Chandra Panda, Science and Technology Department, Government of Odisha. Chairman of Odisha Skill Development Authority, Sri Subrata Bagchi. Chief Secretary, Sri Suresh Chandra Mahapatra. Sri Asit Tripathi, Principal Advisor to Honorable CM and Chairman, Western Odisha Development Council. Sri Manoj Kumar Misra, Secretary to Department of Electronics and Information Technology. I am honored and privileged to be a part of Transforming Odisha Virtual Summit. You all would be happy to know that the Electronics and Information Technology Department, Government of Odisha and Odisha Computer Application Center, that is OCA, in association with ET Government, the Economic Times are organizing the first edition of Transforming Odisha Conclave. Odisha has made great strides in the last 20 years. This has been achieved through a combination of visionary leadership, pre-signed policy making, and its efficient execution. It's no wonder then that in just a short span of time, Bhubaneswar has become the preeminent IT center in Eastern India. All the big IT majors, Wipro, TCS, Tech Mahindra, Infosys, etc., have a presence in Odisha now. But we are not the ones to become content with our past achievements. Our government, under the able leadership of Honorable Chief Minister, is constantly trying to take Odisha to greater heights. In this period of great flux, when a pandemic has disrupted our lives and new technologies are emerging at a faster pace than ever before, our government is making sure that it creates an enabling environment that fosters creativity and innovation and attracts capital investment and talent from all over the world. We have recently notified our new electronics and BPO policies and will soon be notifying two more for data center and IT. This year, we will also be organizing our flagship summit, making Odisha conclave. After the successful development of an IT ecosystem in the state, we now want to ensure that Odisha takes the lead in other areas of knowledge economy as well such as semiconductor fabrication and artificial intelligence, machine learning, data analytics, industrial revolution 4.0, among others. We want Odisha to become a pioneer in innovation and not just play catch up with other states. That is why our newly notified policies when compared to other states are the most comprehensive in terms of the incentives they are offering. There are customized incentives for mega investments more than 300 crores. Also, there are dedicated incentives for research and development, patent registration, and adoption of new technologies. Highlighting our government's focus on social equity, dedicated incentives also exist for employment of women and SCST communities. In the line with the government of India's recent push towards indigenous manufacturing of semiconductors, our government is in touch with multiple companies with their investment commitments ranging from 3 to 15 billion US dollars. We believe Odisha is uniquely poised to emerge as the leader in this area. We have land availability, human capital, resource availability in terms of power and water, and most importantly, a strategic geographic location that allows an easy access to Asian nations, some of which are undisputed leaders in electronics manufacturing. We are making concerted outreach efforts and will soon be organizing multiple road shows in different cities of India to showcase Odisha's attractiveness as an investment destination. We have also developed a more than 200 acre in size electronics manufacturing cluster park in Info Valley and have already received investment commitments of over 200 crore Indian rupees, which will generate employment for over 1600 people in the state. We also have a fabrication lab at STPI and a characterization lab at Triple IT Apart from this, we have made huge leaps in areas of IT infrastructure and digital governance. For instance, we have implemented Go Cloud Odisha, a next gen cloud technology in our data center. We are also establishing a new Tier 3 data center in Odisha. We have also developed a state of the art internet connectivity facility to ensure secure data transmission for government offices. We have also finished the implementation of office workflow automation system that is known as OSWAS. It is now functional in 189 offices, including departments, directorates, HOD, divisional, subdivisional, and district offices. 
this way this is the way this was very helpful during the pandemic as vpn connectivity was provided to government officers to work from home we will also be setting up a neutral submarine cable landing station in puri this will be the first such station in eastern india and will lead to improvements and growth in data connectivity we have also been very active in our endeavor to deploy technology for the purpose of ensuring social equality consequently we have established smart classrooms to bridge the digital divide that exists it will help us achieve better educational outcomes and overcome some of the obstructions caused by the pandemic the school and mass education department government of odisha has now established over 3100 smart classrooms more than 450 projectors and over 130 panels have been installed in the smart classrooms and more are in process we have also developed state dashboards to enable better decision making and effective governance through real time monitoring and trend analysis using big data and data analytics these are acting as a great complement to some of our other flagship achievement schemes aimed towards improvement in the delivery of government schemes for instance mo sarkar project is being implemented across departments for strengthening of governance and optimization of the efficiency of government services 28 departments have been included and more than 2.3 crore citizens have been contacted for feedback collection on 230 plus services similarly under mo seva kendra a door step delivery of services schemes for citizens more than 5000 mo seva kendra have been established in rural areas another flagship scheme social protection delivery platform which is a beneficiary database standardization initiative is also being implemented the main objective of this is to create a registry for all odisha bona fide residents who either are availing or are eligible to avail government benefits this will facilitate the people in availing cashless paperless and faceless access to social benefits and services it will also provide a consolidated view of all schemes and beneficiaries at state level to officials as it is evident from all these steps odisha is leaving no stone unturned in making itself the leader in innovation and adoption of digital technologies for public welfare we will continue with this approach to ensure that our people have access to the best of technologies and services lastly on this platform i want to reiterate our government's steadfast commitment to provide a very conducive investment environment to all investors thank you thank you mr bahira for sharing price content with us now dear viewers a big round of applause for our chief guest mr navin patnayak chief minister of odisha welcome sir pleasure to have you here esteemed guests distinguished participants ladies and gentlemen i am delighted to know that the state electronics and information technology department and odisha computer application center in association with the economic times is hosting the maiden edition of transforming Odisha conclave today Odisha over the last few years has taken massive strides in business and industry transforming itself into a land of opportunity our conducive industrial policy supported by an enabling environment and dedicated team Odisha has brought about a massive change in the industrial ecosystem of the state attracting investors and entrepreneurs from all across the world we are not only emerging as the manufacturing hub of eastern india the resurgent odisha is also on the path of scripting new success stories in other spheres the overall improvement in governance mechanism through our transformative 5t model has made odisha 
a top destination for new investments. I am happy to inform you that Odisha has been able to attract new investments of over rupees 2 lakh crore across multiple sectors even during the challenging COVID pandemic. I am glad that our electronics and information technology wing is turning into a critical enabler for ensuring citizen-centric governance as we aim to deliver most of the citizen services at the door steps of the people. The department is implementing some path-breaking technological reforms to reduce physical interface for availing government services, to reduce regulatory burden on industries, new end-to-end -end online systems for over 30 government-to-business services have been developed by various departments of the state. Post-pandemic, my government has come up with Orisa Electronics Manufacturing Policy, Orisa Data Center Policy, and Orisa BPO Policy to invigorate the IT landscape in the state. These brand new policies are very best in the country in terms of providing support and incentives to the industries. Our IT export is also on upwards swing after clocking over rupees 4,000 crore. I wish transforming Orissa Conclave a great success and congratulate once again ET government the Economic Times and the state agencies for the conclave. Bande Utkal Janan. Thank you, sir, for sparing time from a busy schedule for this event. Now we'll stop for a short five minute break. Stay tuned, everyone, and don't forget to share the highlights of the inaugural session on social media using the hashtag ET Transforming Odisha.